Hi, there you are again. Jermaine, uh, you're here in Copenhagen. How are you finding it so far? And uh, what flights are you looking forward to seeing tonight? I love it. I love it. The people are so friendly. I went downtown in the city tonight, today, earlier this morning, and I absolutely love it. I feel the atmosphere. It makes me hungry to fight, so I got to hold up a little bit. But, uh, you know, I'm always excited for every fight because I know what all of these warriors go through to make it here and to be here and step in that octagon. So every fight I'm looking forward because I know they will give everything they have. And we could see that yesterday you really enjoyed questions and answers <laughs> experience as you were very, you know, hyped into the atmosphere and, and thinking you please elaborate on that, the emotions that you had. You know, I, I'm, I'm honestly a believer that life is too short to not enjoy it. I mean, if you, if you get to do this, you better love it. And if you don't love it, you stop doing it. And I love what I do. So every time when I'm here surrounding with people that have the same passion and love that I have for fighting, and we get to share that love. So that makes me very happy. Yeah, and we could hear and see a lot of support from the local people and not only local. So were you surprised? Was it a shock for you that, that you, you are so support, supported in here in, in, in Scandinavia? I, I was surprised, absolutely surprised, but pleasantly surprised. And, you know, it makes me proud and it gives me so much more motivation to, to become the UFC champion again and, and bring the belt back to Europe because I believe here in Europe we deserve to have another UFC champion and I will ask within my power everything I have, if I win the belt, I will ask the UFC to defend it here in so, Europe. Yeah, so if we're speaking about your next fight, so how is the fighting camp like going on? It's, it's, go it's going great. I feel amazing. Like I've said before, I, have four months to I had four months from the moment I heard that I was going to fight Amanda to prepare myself for this fight. It's plenty of time. Yeah. I don't yeah. need more time. You guys first met when you were both pretty like early into your UFC careers, yeah. and obviously both of you have developed a lot. But it's usually in the first three matches, it's like it's on the one who lost to make the changes. It kind of seems like people have expectations that the one who lost has to change things. How do you look at the rematch, and how do you approach it? Um, I don't. The thing is, I I don't see it as a rematch anymore. I see it me fighting Amanda Nunes, me fighting the best female fighter on the planet right now, right and. And I have to leave the past for what the past is. If I take all these emotions with me into this fight, that's not good. I'm a new fighter. She's a different fighter from the time we fought last time. So you can, I cannot hold on to that. I don't hold on to that. This is, for me, this is just a fight. And I get to fight for the belt again. And that's for me. We are just after the prelims of tonight's event. Uh, which fight do you like the most? From the prelims so far? Yeah, yeah. If you can uh, watch after every fight, because I, I can guess that you are a busy person today. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that busy, trust me, I'm not that busy. Um, to be honest, every fight had something special. Absolutely. Um, what about Mark Lekezi? Because he, he was doing his kind of camp back in, in Holland. Uh, you are know, also a good fighter, so what about his fight and his performance? Did you see any particular classic coach style? Uh, to be honest, I was really in the cab on my way here, so I really did. That's the only fight I didn't see. Um, but I saw uh, one of the guys uh, who trains at the same gym as I'm training for his camp. He came out to Holland, CR. He came back to Holland and trained with the same kickboxing coach as I have. So I watched that fight. Unfortunately, he didn't get the win tonight. He fought a tough opponent. You know, you're not, can, you cannot always win. That, that's fighting. That's sports. That's life. You know, I mean... Uh, yeah, to be honest, every fight I loved. I mean, come on, these guys, they put it all on the line for us to entertain us, right? I mean, they put so much hard work. I, I know what all of these guys and ladies put in. You know, I, I have to put it in every day myself. So I respect them all, absolutely, and, and I enjoy watching them all. You know, going back to your fight with Amanda Nunes, I mean, she's been such a dominant, you know, she's a two-division champ. What do you think? It's going to take for you to be able to bring the belt, uh, the belt back to Europe, like you said. What, what do you think it's going to take to put her away? Mm, that's a very hard question because fighting is like it, anything can happen. I, for me, I'm the most important reason is, uh, and I do have the utmost respect for her. But when we step in the cage, I, I have no respect in that sense. I'm coming there. I'm coming there to entertain the people and have fun myself. As long as I have fun, I will beat Amanda. Do you see a way that it could unfold? How, how do you see it going down? Uh, 
to be honest, I really don't know how it's gonna go down. I know what I'm gonna bring and I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on Amanda and I'm gonna bring pure violence because that's how I fight, that's how I like to fight. And for me, this is the fight, it's do or die. For me is that, and it has nothing to do with our previous fight. I'm 35 years old, I've, I, I've been through it already, you know, I've fought a man, I'm 10 times undefeated world champion in kickboxing. I've been fighting for 21 years, and for 20 years I'm on top of this game. 21, 20 years being the number one contender in the world is a very long time. You know, so uh, for me, December 14, it's do or die. You know, it, there's no other way than do or die. And it is a big card as well. Um, it's just been confirmed that uh, Kamara Usman will uh, defend his title against Colby Carpenter. What do you think about that fight? How do you think that goes? <laughs> I think this is so amazing, seriously. First of all, I'm so happy I'm not the main event. <laughs> I hate waiting. I don't like waiting. I just, just get in there and just get it done. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to wait. I mean, this is history. First time ever in UFC history. Three title fights in one night. I mean, history again. If nobody channels in, they're losing. This is gonna be insane. Amanda versus me. Max Holloway versus Volkanov, Colby versus Usman. Only these three, these three fights, seriously, should, you should just tune in and, and watch. This is gonna be a historic night, seriously, this is gonna be amazing. I'm so excited. You know why I'm also excited? Because I get to watch Usman versus Colby. I get to watch Max Holloway. I get to meet Max Holloway. I'm serious, also a big fan of him. So, listen, I'm gonna be a groupie on the same fight card with all these heroes, I mean, I'm winning, <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> what do you think about Colby Covington? Obviously, he's a he's a big personality in MMA. Uh, you know, a lot of people dislike what he has to say. What do you think about him? Um, I think every person makes his own decisions. Colby probably has a reason why he says and do the things he does. And um, I am a true martial artist, and for me, respect. And honor is very, very high. That the, that's the most important things as a martial artist. And I don't always agree with other, you know, what other people say or do. But everybody makes their own decisions. I'm not, I'm not responsible for what he says. I don't like it out sometimes because I, I believe honestly we should respect each other. But you know, whatever for whatever reason he does it, I think for him it's the right reason. You know, if he if it hypes or not. I know a lot of people are going to tune in because they want to see him fight. So that's good. That's good for everybody. It seems like for a long time the story, like the I many people talking about you versus Cyborg, and uh, you know there was a lot of a controversy around it. Looking back now, obviously she's not in the UFC, but is that still a fight that you think about, and that you know you maybe think that you would want maybe later? Or I've never no, I don't think about it at all. You know, I have a focus right now. I'm fighting the woman that's knocked out Chris Cyborg. I mean, why should I worry about Chris Cyborg at this point now? I respect Chris Cyborg, she's an amazing athlete and I hope, I hope she finds what she's looking for in Bellator and I wish her all the best. But my focus right now is on Amanda Nunes. You mentioned you fought a man before. When did that happen and how? Wow. I, most of the times I know all the dates exactly out of my mind, but let me think. I think it was 2005 or 2006, I think. He also had 40 pounds on me, but it was a boxing match. It was fun. What was the result? We I knocked him out cold. <laughs> <laughs> he asked. He asked for it. Seriously, he tried to rip my head off. So I saw an opening in him. Yeah. How, how did that get put together? How, how did that even uh, come about? I ask myself that all the time. <laughs> I mean, Jermaine, why do you sign up for all this stupid stuff? I ask myself all the time. It went down like they. Uh, he was a fa he's a famous star, and um, he had a challenge. He had fought three fights before, and he he wanted to challenge uh, a pro, like who had more experience but a lower uh, was lower in weight, and so he decided. Okay, I have only three fights. I had at the time, I think, 20 or 23 fights, something pro fights around something like that. And he said, "Well, I want to fight." And I was a world champion, current world champion at that point. And he was like, "I want to fight a world class world champion. Let's not fight kickboxing. Let's do boxing then." So we meet in the middle. He has the 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 weight advantage, but I have the experience advantage. And then we meet in boxing. And his whole training camp was filmed and they showed it on TV and a lot of TV, the TV wanted to sponsor that fight and 
He agreed on it, I agreed on it, and I would not do it again. I'll be honest. Was there any backlash? What was the reaction afterwards? Because it's not obviously... Well, the, 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 the audience exploded when I knocked him out. <laughs> so, <laughs> he was sent to the hospital, so uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, speaking of man versus women, Henry Cejudo has been calling out like Shevchenko. He says he wants to be intergender champion. What do you make about about all that? I think is that something you would find interesting? Uh, I think it's a, just a PR stunt, you know. But if Henry wants to do a kickboxing match with me, yeah, let's do this. All right. Let's so you do want, it. Will see to bend the knee? Oh, he will bend the knee on a kickboxing match. I'm telling you right now, he will bend the knee. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.